All right, hey everybody, welcome back. Once again, it's your girl Jasmine. So today, we're going to kind of talk about transitioning from just having the promises of God to embracing the promises of God. So I'm very excited for this lesson um, because we're going to come, it's, you know, it's a transition type uh, lesson because you're, you know, you're transitioning from just having the promise to, you know, holding the promise. So it's, a, so we're going to kind of talk about transition in a sense. So uh, we're going to start in 1 Samuel and start in verse 9, and we're going to read all the way down to uh, verse uh, 20. It says, So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk, and now Eli the priest sat upon the seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look upon the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all these days of his life and there shall be no razor upon his head. So she was making a vow to God uh, saying that, you know, Lord, if you give me a child, then I will, you know, dedicate my son's life uh, to you and your purpose in which it is that you would have for his life. And it says, and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved and when the, when, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunk. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman with a sorrowful spirit, and I have drunken neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken here too. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and God of Israel grant thee the petition that thou hast asked of him. So basically her basically Eli was saying, okay, the pro the the thing that you asked of God, he is promising you that you will go. He has heard your petition, you know, that the Lord of God, it says, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition. The God was going to grant her her request in which it was that, uh, she had asked of him. And it says, and then she said, let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. And the woman went her way and did eat and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house in Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So we're going to stop right there and we're going to kind of look at the sentence. It says, the Lord remembered her, meaning... When God makes a promise, he does not forget the promise in which he has made to you. He will keep the promise in which it is that he has made to you. Uh, here, uh, we look back, it says uh, in verse 11, uh, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me. The Lord never forgot Hannah, just as she had asked God, remember me and not forget thine handmaiding. He never forgot his promise. He never forgot what it was that he was going to do for Hannah. It says the Lord remembered her. And it says, wherefore it came to pass, meaning if God remembers you and does not forget the promise, it comes to pass. You think about anybody who makes a promise, when they promise you something, if they remember the promise in which they have made to you, that means it comes to pass and they do exactly what it is that they have promised. You know, you think about if you go and sit there and tell a child, hey, I promise you that I am going to, you know, bring you to the movies on Friday, okay? And then you remember your promise, and then on Friday, you go to the movies. That means it says, it came, wherefore, it came to pass, meaning the Lord did exactly what it was that he was going to do in her life, wherefore, it came to pass, meaning God remembered. And when it had, and when it was time, when it was come about after Hannah had conceived, and she bare a son, and called his name Samuel saying, because I have asked him of the Lord, because she had asked God 
uh, for this in her life, God remembered and wanted to bring it to pass in her life. So we're going to kind of, um, look at, you know, how, when God, you know, remembers the promises in which it is that he does for our life, he, he, he meets up with us because he has an appointment with us in our life in which the time in which he wants to do it in our, our lives, you know, God is not a person who just makes empty promises and does not do them. So, um, we, we're going to look at another person in the Bible. We're going to look at Sarah and it says, it says in uh, Genesis 21, verse 1, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. So God, the Lord had said to Sarah, hey, Sarah and Abraham, I promise you I'm going to give you a son um, and I'm going to return. And so it says the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. So whenever God speaks something, he doesn't speak it in, in, in empty words, but God makes promises that are to be kept. They are to be, um, they are to come to pass. They are not, you know, promises that, you know, people in the world make where when he says something's going to happen, it is not going to happen because it is going to come to pass because God said it's going to pass. You know, you think about, um, people, you know, when God told Ezekiel, you know, he spoke, he said, can these dry bones live? He was only asking Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? Only because he already knew that they could live. He just wanted Ezekiel to know, look, these dry bones can live. So whenever God says something, he doesn't say it just to say it. He doesn't ask questions, just to ask questions, you know, but there's a purpose, but you know, there's a purpose or a reason why he is doing what he's doing, why he's asking what he's asking, why he's promising, why he's promising, because he wants to bring these things to pass. So we're going to kind of talk about um, how when God kind of, you know, because, you know, you have to be prepared for what it is that God, um, you know, because if God has a promise for you, you know, the, the promise comes from actions, you know, it comes from just words to action. So there's there's a point and a place of transition when it comes to God's promises in life. And so I'm going to put up the first few questions and then we're going to continue on. Are right, you guys? What is it that God has promised you in your life? Has it came to pass or are you still waiting? Are you prepared for the promise? All right, so basically when God is going to give us um, promises in which it is that he promises us, uh, he prepares us for the promises in which it is, um, in which it is that he wants to give us in our lives. Even if, you know, um, you know, when we think about the promises of God, talking about entering into the kingdom of heaven, you know, but uh, sometimes we can be foolish and not uh, do what it is that God needs us to do. So we're going to kind of, um, talk about that because we can either be foolish or wise in the things of God. And so, um, we're going to kind of look at, uh, Joshua chapter one, verse nine, ha um, and through 11, it says, have I not commanded thee be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed for the Lord, thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. And Joshua commanded the officer of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over the Jordan and go to possess the land, which the Lord your God giveth you to possess. So basically, God was telling them, Hey, prepare, for I'm about to give you the promises in which it is that I have promised you. So, you know, you have three days to prepare and make preparations in which it is for the promises in which it is that God has for you. And so we kind of think about people who, where God will make them a promise and they won't really prepare for the promises in which it is that God has for them. It may be in life where God can give us promises in life, or it can be the promise of the Jesus Christ returning one day and being able to dwell in the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to kind of see that. I'm going to have you guys turn to Matthew 25. And it says, uh, then shall the kingdom of heaven, uh, in verse 1, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Uh, but the wise took oil in their vessels and their lamps while the bridegroom tarried and they slumbered and slept. 
And at midnight, there was a, a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. And the wise answered, No, not so. Let there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to to buy the bridegroom came and they were they were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut afterwards came also the other virgin saying lord lord open up but as he answered and said verily i say unto you i know you not so basically uh when we look at this parable it's basically talking about how the kingdom of god is like a a wedding and these foolish virgins were waiting for the bridegroom uh, which is christ and uh you know the wise virgins speaking of you know the people um of the church or the the wise people who are waiting for christ uh, you know, of the church, the wise people waiting for, of the church who are waiting for Christ, who are waiting on his return, waiting for his promises to come for his church. And the, the, the foolish ones are the people who know the bridegroom's coming, but they have not prepared for his return. And they're not willing to prepare for his return. But one day Jesus Christ is coming and he made that promise that one day he's returning back. And if you're not prepared or ready for um, his coming, then you will miss his return. And he, you know, you will miss that day where he comes and he comes to get his church. Um, because you were foolish and you slumbered and slept and did not, you were not prepared for the bridegroom. And it says those who were not prepared, it says, um, but he answered and he said, verily, I say unto you, I know you not, meaning they did not receive the promises of God. That means they did not enter into the kingdom of heaven. They did not get what it was that God uh, promises, you know, the promises of God belong to all people. But if you do not, um, you know, if you're not prepared for Christ when he comes back, then you will not uh, enter into the kingdom of heaven. If you don't have salvation within Jesus Christ, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. If you're not prepared for Christ's return, if you're slumbering, sleeping and not preparing and not having your oil in your lamp, it, you know, then you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven when Christ comes back. You know, if you're slumbering, sleeping, and thinking that you're just going to live like the world and not uh, live for Christ. And so we're going to kind of see how God said, you know, hey, you know, um, it says pass through the host and prepare your victuals for within three days. You shall pass over the Jordan and go to possess the land, which the Lord give you to possess, meaning he's giving you these promises, something that's given. Like when you think about a gift that is given, you don't have to pay for it. It is given to you. It is free. It is something that is given to you. Um, and so basically we're going to kind of see um, how they kind of start transitioning because God was going to transition them from one place to the next place and where it is in their life. So it says um, in verse 30, uh, Joshua 3, verse 2, it says, um, and it came to pass after three days. So basically, that means that Joshua had told them, look, within three days, you will cross over the Jordan, possess the Jordan in the land in which it is that God is giving to us. And so it says, and it came to pass after three days, meaning it came to pass, meaning it happened that, you know, they said, you will possess the land, you know, prepare yourself for you will possess the land. And it says, and it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God and the priest of the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Meaning whenever they saw the move of God, meaning they were to go after it, meaning they were to move and transition into the next place and where it was that God was going to bring them. And so we kind of, we kind of think about the, um, the, the foolish and wise virgins, when they saw the bride, when they heard the bridegroom was coming and, you know, when they woke up, you know, when they saw God moving, they started transitioning towards the wedding and those who weren't ready did not make it to the wedding. They did not make it to enter into the kingdom of heaven. They did not make it 
uh, you know, to be able to dwell in the kingdom with God because they were not prepared because, you know, it's going to come to pass, but they weren't prepared for it. So we kind of have to be prepared for God's move and what it is that he's going to do in our lives when he transitions, because, you know, he's going to in like in the last season, we should have been preparing for what it is that God has uh, wants to do in our lives. Because we never knew when God was about to move in our life, or we never know when God's about to move in our life. So whatever God's been preparing you for in the last season, I hope you've been, you know, doing what it is that God has called you to do in the last season, because he's been preparing you for the things in which it is that he wants to do for you next season um, in your life. But if you haven't been paying attention then how will you know what it is that you need to do because you weren't prepared? You think about the foolish virgins. They never got the oil because, you know, they were thinking, oh, the bridegroom is never going to come. I can do whatever I want. But one day Jesus Christ is going to return and you can't just do whatever you want because what are you going to do? You're going to get to the gates and Christ is going to be like, well, you know, I never knew you. You can't enter into these gates. And so we're going to kind of talk to uh, in numbers and talking about the uh, the move of God and how we're supposed to follow a uh, God's move into the and transition into the next place and where it is that he's bringing us. So I'm going to put up the next few questions and then we're going to carry on. Are you guys? Have you slumbered and slept and not prepared for God's promises in your life? Are you ready to transition from having the promise to embracing the promise? All right, so when you think about um, transitioning and, and the move of God and what it is that God uh, wants for your life and, and, and going into the places where God wants you to go in your life, you think about Hannah and it says, you know, it says, wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, she also bare a son. So that means she was kind of transitioning into the place from, from basically having the promise, conceiving, and then bearing. Um, and then when you think about, uh, people like, um, it says kind of in Genesis 21, people like Sarah, bear with me one second as I turn, uh, you think about Sarah, it says right here, it says, and Sarah conceived and she bare a son in his old age is a set time in which God had spoken. So basically she conceived and then she bare. So they're kind of, you know, you're transitioning. So you kind of like have to go on, you know, the move of God. You know, she saw that the Lord had visited her. She she knew that it, and when God had visited her, she conceived. You know, she saw the move of God. She knew God was here for her at that, at that moment, at that time. It was going to give her life and was going to allow her to conceive because that was her timing. That was her moment. She saw the move of God. And so we're going to kind of talk about, you know, watching the move of God and how God moves in our lives when he's going to, uh, you know, give us the promises in our lives. So I'm going to have you guys turn to numbers because, you know, we're thinking about transitioning because, you know, they had to transition because they went from being, you know, both of them were barren. They went from people who were barren to having life in their life, you know, from conceiving to having conception. So they had life in their life. There were new things in their life in which were happening in their life. So um, we're going to kind of talk about uh, watching the move of God and how um, we kind of watch how God moves. And so I know a little bit about this because I've been doing it for the last year when God told me to kind of journey and transition in my life. So it says, uh, in Numbers chapter 9, verse 19, and when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. So basically, they were to follow the cloud, uh, and, you know, whenever it says along the tabernacle many days. Um, so basically, when the cloud was upon the tabernacle, they were to journey not. So they saw the move of God. They knew when and when not to move. And it says, and and so it can, and it was when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And so it was when the cloud abode from Eve even unto the morning, that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed. Neither 
whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up they journey or whether it was two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle remaining there on and the children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed not and when it was taken up they journeyed so basically they were seeing the move of God and so basically they knew like whenever the cloud journeyed they would move um, they would transition into the position in which it was that um, God had them for their life. Um, so I think about like in my life where um, God was kind of transitioning me from one place to another in my life and he was having me fly across country. Whenever I would see the move of God, like he told me to fly to California, so I flew to California. Then I kind of had to, you know, I was only in California for 24 hours. Um, then basically I heard a woman on the phone who said, you know, the disciples traveled in twos, and that was a uh, cue to me that God wanted me to go somewhere else. And so after I was at her, I was in Tennessee for about a few weeks, and then um, God was like, look, I want you to go to Florida. I said, I have no money. I prayed. I woke up with $2,500 in my account. I went online. There was no internet in the house, so the internet just happened to work long enough for me to book my ticket. I said, when do you want me to leave? Uh, you know, the 8th was highlighted. Mind you, it was like the week before the 8th, and the 8th was highlighted. And I'm like, okay, God, you want me to go on the 8th? So I went on the 8th, and then the internet turned off. So I, whenever it was like the cloud, whenever I saw the move of God is when I moved, and, you know, wherever God wanted me to go when he wanted me to go. So when we are transitioning into the new place and where it is that God wants us to ha uh, 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 to move to, we have to make sure that we uh, follow um, God and the move of God in which it is that he wants us to do in our life and make sure that we're on top of following God in the transition, whatever instructions it is, because you're transitioning into one place to another. And, you know, like basically they had to, they had to, um, do this because it says that they had never been this place before, you know, it says, yet there shall be a space in between you and it, in verse 4 of Joshua 3, uh, about 2,000 cubits by measure, come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way before, so they were supposed to give space to it, so that they could actually see what it was that God wanted them to see. Because, you know, like whenever you're like so close to something, like maybe you're following somebody and you're so close to them that you can't really see where they're directing you or where you're being directed. Like, so they were giving space to it so they could actually see the move of God and where it is that God was directing them so they could embrace the promise of God because they've never been to that place before. So, you know, you think about, like I said, Hannah. Hannah had never had children. Yes, her, uh, her husband's other wife had children, but she had never had her own, ch you know, child. So it was just like, you know, new, something that was new to her. And because it was, it was her own. And so we're kind of like, see, you know, um, so basically, you know, because Hannah had to do certain things with her promise in which God promised her, you know? And so like, you think about like, you know, they're sitting there following God's instructions and, and God's move, you know, and, and, you know, Hannah had made a vow to God here, God, I'm going to give you my son. And so of course Hannah had to like, you know, allow God to move in her life and understand the instructions of which it is that God want her to do because she vowed a vow in God's life in her life uh, for her life and God gave her the promise so you know if you know when you continue reading in uh, first Samuel it says but Hannah went not up for she said unto her husband I will not go until the child is by be weaned and then I will bring him and he may appear before the Lord and abide there forever so basically she was going to give up her child uh, to the Lord so that he could do the purpose in which it is that God uh, had purpose for him but she had to follow you know God's instructions she had to wean him and do the things in which God uh, uh, you know wanted her to do because you know she had never been to that place before in her life and she had to sit back and kind of do the things in which God had, you know, she was transitioning from, you know, being barren to conceiving life to, you know, to bearing life to, you know, embracing life 
to weaning her child and then having to let her child kind of go um, and basically uh, do his purpose in which it is that he set off. So when we, you know, make promises to God and when God makes promises to us, he remembers the promises in which it is um, that he has for us. But we have to make sure that we follow him and transition in, into one place to another because, you know, you think about these people, you know, they were barren. Uh, Abraham and Sarah, you know, they were barren. They could not conceive. They could not have child. And then God gave them their their promise. God gave them those things, and you know, they they transition. But it, it can be hard to transition it into the place where God wants you to be if you're not listening and following the instructions and following the move of God and knowing when God says, you know, uh, to follow the cloud and when God says you know, okay, stop, you know, whether it's day or night or, you know, where to move because you've never been there to go. So it's always key to listen to God's instructions because you've never been in this place before in your life where God's transitioning you into, you know, they had never been parents before. They had never done uh, those things in life in which God wanted to do in their life. You know, whatever it is that God wants to do in your life, you may have never been there before. So you want to watch God move in your life and, and give God some space so he can open up certain doors. Because, you know, like you don't want to move without God. Like, you know, it can be rough to move without God. You know, like you think about Moses. Um, Moses had told, um, when uh, was told when he was transitioning with the children of Israel um, you know, he said, God was just like, look, I'm not going to go with you. And, and Moses said, you know what? Hey, point blank period, we can stay right here because if you don't go with us, you know, then what are we going to do? You know, he was just like, show me your glory. Like, you know, like you, you have to come with us, Lord. You know, if you're not with us, then how can we move? How can we go into this new place? Because we need you to guide us in this new place. You need to be with us in our journey. You need to be here with us, showing us where it is that we need to do, what we need to do in our journey. He knew that his whole journey and transitioning out of Egypt into uh, going towards the promised land was only God. You know, there's no way that God um, you know, can't go with them or he can move before God because God was the one who was, uh, had been transitioning them that whole time. God had been the whole, uh, the one who was helping them prepare to get to the next place and, and move and, and deliver them and, 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 you know, heal them and do all those things in their life, you know? And so, uh, we, as, as children of God, we need to allow God to move and open the doors that he needs to open, you know, part the seeds that he needs to part in our lives and make the moves and just follow the move of God as he transitioned us to one place in our lives, uh, to the next place in our lives, uh, so that we can just embrace the promises of God. You know, that year, the children of Israel embraced the promised land. They entered into the promised land. They crossed over into the promised land. They, they held onto the promises of God. Are you allowing God to lead you as you transition? Exodus 12.2 this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you.